Hello all, today we will make a blueprint with a reactive Niagara particle system that is responsive to the location and speed of the player. Let's jump in. All right, let's jump in. In our content drawer, right click, new blueprint class from type actor. Let's call this BP underscore responsive particle box. Right click again, create a new Niagara system from selected emitter, hit next, and use the hanging particulate preset. Press the plus and hit finish. Let's call this NS glow box. Let's open up our Niagara system. Let's add the following parameters. Hit the plus sign. Let's make a new vector. Let's call this box size. Let's make another vector. Call this point location. We'll make a float and call this point intensity. And we will make a, another float called spawn rate and a linear color, we we'll call this particle color. So what we're going to do is in our emitter, let's go to shape location. Let's drag our box size into the box size variable. In spawn rate, we'll drag our spawn rate variable up. In initialize particle, we'll drag our particle color into color Let's delete this scale color. We're going to hit the plus sign and we're going to say scale color to create a new one. We'll drag this up. Actually, it doesn't really matter where it is. Let's hit the green plus size again and say point force. We'll drag this towards the top. And we're going to turn off our wind force for now. So in our point force, in force strength, grab point intensity and drag it up. And in origin, grab our point location and drag it to where it says simulation position. And we're going to click this Boolean and we're going to change our force fall off to 250. This will be the area that the player's location affects and we're going to set it to that. So first, let's set our box size variable to 500 by 500 by 500. And we will set our spawn rate to 5000. And now we'll see particles show up. And we can use this color parameter to change the color of our particles. Now that we've set up our particle system, we can jump into our blueprint. All right, let's jump into our blueprint. In the content drawer, double click. If you see this, you can go open full blueprint editor and let's add our components. Let's add a box collision and let's add a Niagara particle system. Before we do anything, let's grab our particle system that we've created and let's add it as a reference in the system asset. So now already we see that we have a particle system. Let's add some logic to our construction script. First, what we'll do is we'll grab our box. We will say set box extent. And let's create our own parameter. So we'll say promote to variable. And we will say box size. Now let's set the scale of the Niagara particle system accordingly. So they scale simultaneously. Let's say set user parameter. Let's say set Niagara variable of type vector. Let's drag this in and we'll grab our box size. So now these share the same size. So when this is 500,
Let's see. Oh, we have to set our variable here. So let's call this user dot box size. And once we have that, you'll see that the size of the particle will fit inside the trigger box. So if I scale this down to 25, 25, 25, and I hit compile. So now I just had to compile that code. So now all the particles are gonna fit in the box. So if this is 100, if this is 1000, they're all going to be responsive and they'll all scale accordingly. Great, so let's make this 2000, 2000 by 200. So now you'll, we'll notice that if we were to drag this into our environment, that it's gonna pop up and it's gonna be halfway in the floor and that's not great. So let's code it that it can sit on top of the floor. So in our construction script, let's first let's parent our Niagara to our box. Let's grab our box. Let's say set world location. Let's get the location of our default scene root. So let's say get world location. Let's add half, or let's add the Z of our box. So we'll break this vector. We will make a vector and we'll drag our Z in here. So now we've gotten the box size and we're going to take the Z value of it, which I believe is cut in half uh, from the extents. And we're going to add it to the world location. So now we'll see that our box appears sitting on top of the ground. And I can use control and L and move my left, uh, move my mouse without clicking, just control and left, uh, control and L held on the keyboard and I can rotate my directional light. So I can see that I have my box particles sitting on the ground. All right, now let's add the logic for the collision. Let's go into our event graph on our box, let's right click, say add event, and on opponent, on component begin overlap, and on end overlap. On the overlap, we will test the other actor with a cast and say cast to character. And if it is a character, we will promote this to a variable and we'll say overlapped character. And we will set timer by event. We'll promote this to a variable so that we have a reference to our timer. We'll say this will happen every 0.1 seconds. Let's make it loop by ticking this true. Pull off of our delegate and say create event. And then let's add a new event. And let's call this set uh, variables. Great. So now we will, on our end overlap, cast to character. And we're going to grab a reference to our timer. Let's say get timer. Pull off and say clear and invalidate. And we'll get our overlapped character. I'll copy and paste that. And we're going to set this to an invalid reference. So to recap, when we overlap, we're gonna test that it's a character with a cast. If it is a character, we're gonna set that as a reference. We're gonna kick off a timer that will go off every 0.1 seconds, and we're gonna set a reference to our timer. When we leave the box, we're gonna cast and make sure it's a character again. If it is, we're going to clear and invalidate that timer handle so that this does not happen anymore. We don't continue to kick off the timer, and we're going to invalidate the character reference. And now the fun part, let's set the variables on our system to be responsive to our player. So on our set variables event, what we'll do, let's grab a reference to our character and a reference to our Niagara system. And first we'll say set Niagara variable float. Hit compile. 
and we'll call this the same value that we did as our intensity. So as the player's movement increases, we'll scale the intensity accordingly of the point force that we added in our emitter. So this is called user point intensity. So we'll say user dot point intensity. Let's get our character and say get character movement. We're going to go scroll to the bottom to get the component. Let's say get max speed. Let's also pull off and say get vel or get velocity. We're going to get the vector. We're going to pull off this and say vector length, which will give us our speed as a float. Pull off here and say map range clamped where we input the player's speed. We assess what is the lowest it could be and what is the highest it could be. So we're going to put our max speed in here and zero is our lowest speed. And we're going to change this to a zero to one value so that we can use it in a linear interpolate or a lerp. We're going to bring this into our alpha. And then we will have a float variable and we'll call this point force max. Let's set this to 2000. And then we're going to put that into our point intensity variable. Let's now set one more value. So I'm going to pull off my Niagara and say set Niagara variable of type vector three. I'm going to drag this in here. And let's get our character, our overlap character, and say get capsule. So at the bottom, we'll have our, our capsule component. And let's get world location of that scene component. And we'll pull that into here. And now we need to set the variable name. So it's called user.pointLocation. Now let's go through and double check that all of our Niagara variables are set. Amazing. And let's see what we have. So now when I enter, I'll see that the points will start to push away from me. But let's turn this effect up a little bit. First, let's go add a float into our blueprint, and we'll call this uh, spawn rate. Let's turn this to a float. Let's add another uh, variable set in here. So let's say set Niagara variable float. We'll just drag this to the end. And we'll call this user dot spawn rate as that is the variable in here. And then let's also, while we have that, so I'm going to drag my spawn rate in here and let's pull off one more time and say set Niagara linear color. And let's call this user dot particle color like our variable here. So it must say user dot as a prefix. Let's pull off this and say promote variable, call this color. And let's expose the point force max, the spawn rate, and the color, as well as the box size. So in our environment, Let's make sure our spawn rate is something like 10,000. So we have a lot of particles. And I'm going to continue to turn down the light so I can see them. Let's make sure they have a color, which is why it's not appearing here. And we'll give this an alpha of 1. So now we can see them. So let's say I want to change it to a blue. I can change it. 
and it will reappear uh, the proper color. And, you know, let's say I want to make it a more condensed box. So I can make it 1000 by 1000. So now I have this responsive blueprint that I can use to change the variables. And when I play, we'll see that the particles are reactive. And I'm going to increase that intensity a little bit because I want a more dramatic effect. So I'm going to change the point force to 3000. And I'll press play. And I'll see that now the particles are more reactive to my player. So if I want to increase this, I can increase the force fall off distance on my point force. So if I were to say 500, and I could even increase the strength of my point force. So let's say this is 5,000. Once I begin to overlap the box, you'll see that the particles will really start to move quickly. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 content.